Ready? Yeah. <laughs> what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Fitness Stuff for Normal People podcast. I'm Mariana. And I'm Tony. And the fitness industry right now is not what it could be. It's become something built on unrealistic expectations, aesthetics, and external validation, directing attention away from what actually matters. The bottom line is we're not trying to provide just another fitness podcast, but completely change the fitness industry for the better by providing you with the knowledge and tools to give you confidence in applying the best possible training and nutrition into your own lives. Where today we ask you guys what topics you want us to rank as overrated or underrated. And we got some great answers on our Instagram stories. We've pulled together 42 different topics that all fall under the categories of either nutrition, training and exercise, lifestyle slash trending and supplements, where we will each have 30 to 60 seconds to make our vote and explain our reasoning, blind reacting to each other. And we're going to kind of see how this goes. There might be some debating. We might change our answers. Could be a disaster. We don't have... Could it be could the end be of the disaster. Show. Could be the end of the show. Who knows? <laughs> and before that, if you really like this episode or just the podcast in general, make sure to give us a five star review wherever you're listening and to follow us on Spotify. It's a great way to support us and allow us to keep growing and reaching more and more people. And if you want even more after each episode, join us over on Premium for just five bucks where you get a bonus episode every single Friday where we answer your questions. And just a few weeks ago, on top of that, we dropped our first ever complete training program for free to all premium members with our 12 week push pull leg program, first of many, many more training programs to come. And on top of that, just being a part of fitness stuff premium, you get entered in a $300 Legion supplement monthly giveaway every single month. Sign up is going to be down for that in the show notes below and shout out to our day ones, our besties, our homies, over at Legion Athletics for sponsoring today's episode where we honestly barely have to tell you why they're a truly great company because it takes all of about five minutes at scanning their website to realize this is an education first company. Their ethics, their scientific approach, and their quality all speaks for itself. And if you're like me who likes to put in some due diligence before spending money somewhere or in a certain company, go listen to our podcast with Mike Matthews we did a few months back. He's their CEO and I think you'll get a pretty good understanding that these are some people you could trust. Are supplements going to get you a six pack? Are they going to help you pack on 20 pounds of muscle? No, but the right ones can help. And that can be the difference between whether you make it to your goal or not. If you want safe, third party tested, and some of the highest quality supplements on the market, you can use our code FSPOD or FSPOD at checkout for 20% off your first order or double points after that. We'll leave the link in the show notes for that down below as well so you don't get lost. I don't think mm -hmm. I've been so excited for an episode in a long time. More because I like arts and crafts and scrapbooking. So this. Well, yeah, you pizza. went ahead and made some fun. I have terrible. These are these are my dog's um, veterinary <laughs> records. <laughs> I didn't even have a blank piece of paper. I just I had to fold something in half. I'm like, yep, mm -hmm. these got all. This is from when they first got him. His first ever checkup. I don't know why I kept all these, but. Oh. You can put you can frame that or put that in a little doggy scrapbook. I, I just mm -hmm. like scrapbooking. I like little arts yeah. and crafts. And did I go over? I don't think this is. I, I, this looks cheap, but this actually took a lot of effort. Hopefully, it goes appreciated. If you're just listening to this, what we're talking about, if you have no clue because it's just audio, we have cute little overrated, underrated, and properly rated signs to go for. Yes. So if you're not watching this one on YouTube or on Spotify, missing out. But. You'll get the gist. You'll, get You'll the still gist. get the gist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now we put this up on our Instagram stories yesterday before this recording and asked you guys what you wanted us to rate. What's going on right now in either supplements, diet, nutrition, training, what's <laughs> trending, lifestyle. And y'all came through. It's actually probably tied for my Q and A's for what got the most responses. I, I had hundreds and hundreds of responses for these of what people really wanted to know. So mm -hmm. this is the first time we've ever played a game, right? Like some sort of a game. Yeah. Isn't it? It's got to be. Yeah, I so, think so. I don't, I don't be, think we've that, ever. <laughs> are we going to be, is this going to be a little rough around the edges? Probably. But that's what we got Reagan, our all-star editor for, to take out anything stupid we say or mistakes. How many times, that's what I'm saying, over under five times we put up the wrong sign. But how we're going to do it I is essentially that's... just go down the list. We're going to start off with the supplement category. Move on to diet and nutrition, then training, and then finish up with lifestyle and then what's trending, what's hottest in today's market, where essentially we're going to read it off. 
and then we both flash our signs, overrated, underrated, or properly rated. But we're going to explain why we think that way. And if we have a disagreement, we'll see if one of us changed our minds based on what the other says. Mm -hmm. So we're going to rattle this off. And we'll probably do some more of this kind of stuff in the future too. So if you're not on our Instagrams, personals, and the podcast page, make sure to hit that up because that's where we do these votes, these polls, these things like that, that we include in these episodes. And that link's always mm -hmm. in the show notes too. Yep. So should we start yep. off? I'll start with supplements yes. and I'll read it off and then we'll vote. We're going to start off with one of the most requested. I think people did it just to bug me because they know how much I talk about it. We're going to start off with creatine. Do we do a countdown? I don't even know how this works. We go like a no, three, we don't two, do. One. I don't. Think, <laughs> we don't even do right, a countdown. Let's start it off. Right, I'm gonna say. Th <laughs> I was gonna Come say on, three, you can't two, act one. like you didn't know my answer. All right, creatine. <laughs> overrated? You think it's overrated? But I'm gonna explain myself. You first. This is and this is. Uh, trust me, I'm not. Uh, this is not a troll. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm rating creatine overrated. You rated it well rated. Well rated. I said What's it was reason? well rated. Creatine. The now this is hard because now I'm thinking of all the ways that why Tony ranked it overrated. Tone over I think it's well rated because it's one of the most well researched supplements out there as far as available evidence for supporting what it can actually do. You have to put in the work. You still have to focus on your training program, focus on your nutrition. It's not some magical supplement, but there is evidence there that it's it can, it can help with strength and performance based workouts. 100%. I agree with everything you said. I, it was between, for me, it was between well-rated and overrated. Why I went overrated for creatine is not because if anyone's followed me for more than five minutes or this podcast, it, I think as far as supplements go, it is the number one most impactful supplement. Mm -hmm. But I also think since it went viral on different social media sites, people are treating it like it is much more than just a supplement. Right. Even I the completely best, agree. Th that's the only reason I went overrated is because even the best supplement is only going to impact your progress by what, maybe two, 3% mm -hmm. compared to your lifestyle, your training intensity, your frequency, your programming, your intention behind that, your diet, your nutrition. So is it the most impactful supplement? Hell yeah. But I think people overhype it to the point where they're treating it like it's more than a supplement. That's the only yeah. reason I go overrated. Do I think every single person still get my mom to take it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. For all that the was the first thing I thought. Of. I was like, oh, well, I can. I definitely see that. Also, you guys have to keep in mind, Tony and I are also basing this off of, because a lot of this is media influence, like how yeah. overrated or underrated is this on social media and how people talk about it. So Tony and I are also coming from two different worlds of what are you seeing on this? Do you see more misinformation on my yeah. you page? Like creatine is there, but it's not one that I see often talked about in terms of being this, you know, crazy thing that's equivalent to taking steroids or something. <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't realize that because there's yeah. some things where I think I know when seed oils were first coming up, I had barely heard of them. And you're like, these things are everywhere. So that's actually yeah. a good point. But that's where I, I, it is definitely based on my feed more, I think, is you see people that just extrapolate it and make it seem like it's anabolic steroids. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, the only reason. I can totally see happening. Still a great supplement. Now let's go on to number two. Oh, I'm going to count this down. We're doing whey protein shakes in three, two, one. Underrated. We both said underrated. underrated. All right. We're both on underrated. Why? Mm -hmm. I said underrated because I feel like one, there's this, you'll have this camp that looks at whey protein shake as a processed food and you should get your foods from whole lean sources of protein. So I see people either against it or just not really talking about it enough, yeah. but it's so convenient. It is such an easy way to get in more protein without having to think twice about it. And even protein bars get a lot more attention than a protein shake. And true. I wish that if they should at least be on the same caliber as a protein bar, because you're getting, it's a convenient, easy way to get in more protein. That's why I would say it's underrated and not enough people talk about it. I never thought about that. You're right. It's not talked about even as much as protein bars, but I even yeah. think underrated, but more even specifically for fat loss, one of the most mm. underrated tools in the world, because any successful fat loss phase, meaningful, long-term lasting fat loss phase means you have to stay consistent to a calorie deficit, meaning you got to get good at fighting hunger and cravings. And we know how important protein is, is in that, right? Like you got to find a lot of high protein and low calorie foods 
which there just aren't a lot of unless you're just pounding down chicken, which can be boring. So that's why yeah. I said protein, which I'm going to honestly even say this. I think for most adults, I would almost rank protein as more important than creatine in a daily oh, for sure. regimen just because it helps mm-hmm. bridge that gap that so many people are short on. And it does so in a low calorie. And that's I hate when people say it's synthetic. It is digested the, identically as food is in your stomach, in your body. It's just extracted from food. They just take away the fats. Yeah and the carbohydrates from it. It's a phenomenal tool. Mm-hmm. So I think it's way underrated, way too underrated. Me too. I agree. And it's, right. I think also the issue, this is one last note, don't look to a whey protein shake as a meal replacement. Because if you're yes. trying to curb your hunger with just any sort of liquid, Not if anything, great. you're just prolonging that hunger. So don't mm. get that confused there. Yeah. Great, great addition. Let's go into number three. I wonder what we're going to go here. We're going to do greens powders in three two one overrated shocker to the one millionth degree i wish i could just have a thing that says just absolutely not but greens powders no never we've talked about this so much overrated you should always be prioritizing getting your greens where you can from food greens powders have zero fiber fiber is what feeds your good gut bacteria And also the absorption rates are going to differ for greens powders. We don't really know how well we absorb greens powders and how the different micronutrients interact with each other combined in a powder like that for optimal absorption. And there are so many claims that I think make it so overrated. If it was just a matter of, yeah, I'm just having this greens powder, get a little bit extra nutrition, don't really have time to eat greens much lately, what, what have you, it's just a little bit convenient, but it's not a replacement. No, it's the greens powders help mm-hmm. cure your gut health. They help with de-bloating. This gets you all the vitamins and minerals you need. This is essential for overall health. No, it couldn't be further from the truth. And not enough people promote eating more vegetables. It's going to help with appetite. It's going to help you feel more energized. And overall, if you are having vegetables in your diet, that can help promote other healthy eating patterns. A lot of good comes with it. Greens powders. Mm. Well said. I was going to say, they're not harmful in any way, but we're rating them based on the hype surrounding them. And there's just way too much hype. And the products that have the most hype, the athletic greens, the bloom greens, the bloom is one of just the lowest quality products. And then athletics is what, almost a hundred dollars a month for something that's not going to improve any measurable aspect of your health. Overrated, unanimous decision. Next one. Also highly requested. BCAAs or EAAs in three, two, one. Which overrated, but I'm surprised yeah. it was highly requested because I feel like you talk about them often. But yeah, I, I poop on them all the time. Yeah, I was surprised. I was surprised too. Why do you say overrated? Okay, so I this is BCAAs are one that I definitely Tony has way more knowledge about them. That's where, but- and here's why I respect because I think a lot of the time the hype stays around because. I think almost every supplement company at one point has or had a BCAA supplement. And when research started coming out about these, it actually was promising, showing that it really could help aid in muscle recovery and muscle soreness. And that's until everyone stacked it up. This was like late 2000 teens in the last like decade where people really realized, oh, in a lot of these studies, these people were not getting nearly enough protein. And as soon as you hit the daily protein requirement, Every single benefit from BCAA supplements disappears. They're not helping in muscle soreness, recovery, building, fat loss, anything. And that's actually another reason I really respect Mm -hmm. Lane Norton is his supplement company. He had BCAAs at one time, and I think it was a few years ago, he completely discontinued them, not because they weren't making money, but because the science had come out and the science had changed. But a lot of these Mm -hmm. companies, I think it's that logical fallacy that causes them to hang on to it just to support their own guns instead of just saying, admitting, hey, times have changed, science has changed we realize these aren't doing anything yeah. anymore. And I know a lot of people are like, what if I don't get enough protein in my diet? Should I have it then? It's like, no, that's a way no. bigger problem you need to solve. Yeah. <laughs> is the protein problem first. All right. Yeah. Going into the next one about halfway through these. All right, after BCA. Wait, we- I don't know if I want to change my answer right now on this one. All right. This you got one. about three seconds pre-workout Shoot, I'm gonna this. I'm just in three, two, said. one. Oh, Okay. What'd you I rate put it? Well oh, rated. we both we matched on this one. I didn't think we were gonna mm-hmm. match on this one. Okay. I really wasn't sure if I should put overrated or 
well-rated. Same. But I would say well-rated in the sense that people everywhere are taking their pre-workout before the gym. Everyone takes it. And I think that that's for good reason. It's going to give you some energy to push you through your workout. Not everyone always has the energy, especially if you are working full time and you either have to go early in the morning or you have to go after work and you really don't want to go. You need that extra boost of energy to get you there and it can push you through your workout and it can also help you maybe perform a little bit better that day in the gym than if you were feeling really tired. Yeah. That's why I think it's well, well rated. And I think it's also the giving you that little hype to push you and get you excited about going to your workout to have a little routine. And I think it can yeah. be harmless, but I also think that there's this side that is like dry scooping, two to three scoop servings that, of pre-workout. That's what got me. That's why I was like, oh, yes. does this deserve to be overrated? But then I was like, I feel like that's the minority, like the younger crowd that's the minor- yeah. dry scooping it, almost like borderline addicted to caffeine because of it, the super mm-hmm. high stim ones. I- I'm yeah. pretty much exactly with you. Training intensity so. really matters. And it's why a lot of people see plateaus and get stuck is because they're just showing up and they're going through the motions. Mm-hmm. And I think at least a pre-workout with the right ingredients, right? Caffeine mainly, but then other ones like betaine, beta alanine, L-citrulline, sodium, things like that, that notably in, have an actual significant impact on improving your performance, your endurance, your strength in the gym. I think it's well-rated. I think for a lot of people, it can really help for most goals. Okay. Yeah, me so too. I don't think we've only mismatched on creatine so far. Let's keep going. Yeah, which, next which one. is still shocking to me. Next one, next one. We got <laughs> – this one kind of goes under supplements and diet, but detoxing. In supplements and in diets in three, two, one. I'm bad at this. Overrated. Any detox supplement, drink, diet. What's like a, is there a common one right now that's like? I, no, I don't know. If there is, there's not one I pay attention to. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't pay. Usually they're like little concoctions that people make and it's like, this is going to detoxify your, I know chlorophyll was really hyped for mm. its detoxification whatever. I feel like I sound like a broken record when I say this. You can't, you already have, you're well equipped with your organs that are going to detoxify your body for you. Your liver and kidney have enzymes that help get rid of any potentially harmful substances and you're detoxing as we speak. We always are doing it. If you can't get rid of anything that's potentially harmful, you could get really sick and you could die. And you'd be in the hospital before a supplement would help that. Yeah. Yeah. At that point. So no, I'm with you. I, I don't want to sound like a broken record either. What yeah. specific compound are you detoxing? How is this mm-hmm. product detoxing that specific compound? And how is this not already done by the liver and kidney? That's it. Yeah. Like and most of the, the time of it's like, and this with greens powders too, detoxing and greens powders, it's something that's going to have a laxative effect. It's going to make you go to the bathroom. So you're going to lose some water weight. You're going to feel like you maybe feel a little bit less bloated or something, or like you got rid of all the bad stuff. No, you're just, they pull water into your intestines so that you go to the bathroom more. Yeah. That's what I know. Yeah. Are. A lot of people do use them to like kickstart a diet to lose weight because they see that initial flush of weight from the one going to the bathroom so much. And then two, it's generally where you drink like 500 calories a day for a week, which mm-hmm. puts you in a massive calorie deficit. And then your weight spikes back up after that week. And you're like, oh, it's because I can't stay consistent. It's because that scale is just giving you a signal. That's not really what you're looking for. That's, it's just, mm-hmm. that's the story with all detoxes. Yeah, Next one, I- one that's been hotter <laughs> more and more often. And we actually just mm-hmm. did one AMA on this, I think over on premium. Hydration or electrolyte supplements and beverages in three, two, Oh, you, oh my God. I thought we were going to disagree. I put overrated. Would, yeah. Overrated. I really I think, thought we I were going to disagree. I think massively over, I think massively uh, overrated, but. Me too. Them. They're going to, electrolyte supplements, they're going to give you a little bit of extra hydration. If, if you are someone who is working out for a prolonged period of time, maybe you are a, a runner, um, or you're going to be working out in the heat for over an hour, then you really got to be cautious about replacing those electrolytes because you're going to lose a lot in your sweat and you want to focus on sustained energy. However, that's just to help rehydrate you, right? Mm -hmm. Water alone, if you're just going to your standard workout, if you're going to be in the gym, strength training, like water alone is going to be enough to hydrate you and also diet if you're focusing on diet with electrolytes. But there's nothing wrong. It can't hurt to get in that extra bit of hydration. I I love them when I'm hungover. I don't know if it's a placebo. 
I don't know if it's if I just feel more hydrated, but it's great to get in that extra Mm -hmm. sodium is what they mostly have enough sodium, but these hydration electrolyte supplements don't even have enough potassium or magnesium that are, is what you're also going to be looking for in terms of electrolytes. Yeah. So it's kind of like, that was the big one too is here. It was the supplements and the hydration drinks because they're kind of a big thing. Yeah. Now too. And I think a big problem I see is the people that would really use these, you need rapid rehydration during a long Mm -hmm. bout of intense workouts, energy, whatever it is. And here's the biggest thing is most of them don't have any sugar or carbs. And people always forget like glucose is a huge component of speeding up how quickly you rehydrate, especially with the water and the sodium when you need to be rehydrated. So when all these places are taking out the sugar and promoting oh, we have no sugar. We have no sugar. If the goal is rapid rehydration, that's a bad thing, not a good thing. Yeah. And that's yeah. a big that's one. I'm I know... a fan of liquid IV. Like people are like, oh, it has 11 grams of sugar. Are yeah, you slamming say, like five of them a day? That's usually one of the better ones, especially like I, I think prime, which is a yummy drink, but that actually cracks me up for prime is it has no sugar. And it, the only electrolyte that really matters the most for rehydration is sodium and water. Like yeah. that's the, the others matter, but sodium's by far the biggest component. And prime has I think less than 2% of your daily value. So it's got almost no sodium or yeah, sugar. Like, like liquid IV, two. people say it tastes terrible. I'm like, yeah, it tastes like salt. It should yeah. taste like salt. Their formula has definitely gotten better. I don't really think it tastes as bad as it used to. Yeah. But it, yeah, it has a ton of sodium in it. I had BioSteel this weekend because they, they were all out of liquid IV at the grocery store and they're sugar-free and they were just at the counter. I don't know why I even grabbed them. And they were sugar free and had very little sodium. And I was like, this didn't, this is doing nothing. This is helping this me is, not at all. Yeah. So uh, that's why I think we both said overhyped is not because they yeah. don't have their time in place, but because for most people, they're not really going to help much is all yeah. it really is. All right. Continued mm-hmm. on to the next one. We got, uh, Oh, I'm excited to see what you say for this one. I don't really know my answer for this one either. All right. Cause we're closing out supplements here. We got about three, four left. We got, probiotics in three, two, one. Ah, well rated. I also put, you put well. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. do you think they're well rated? I think they're well rated because this is one of the supplements that I do think if you have access to them, high, high quality probiotics are typically going to be at least probably 45 bucks. So I say, if you have access to them, it's one of those things that can't hurt. You do want to make sure you're getting one that is third party tested and that they pay attention to their dosage because you want to have enough and also make sure you're getting the right strain that is for what you need. Not all probiotic supplements are alive at the time that they reach your small intestine. So their efficacy is unknown, Mm -hmm. but good quality ones. Like I know Legion has a good one. Seed has a good one. Thorn also has a good probiotic. That is something that can't hurt because you want to make sure that you have enough of those good gut bacteria to help fulfill their functions. And a lot of people in the standard American diet do not eat enough fiber, which Mm -hmm. is going to feed your good gut bacteria and don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. So if a probiotic is something you get your hands on, it can be helpful for just allowing your the good microbes in your gut to thrive. Team probiotic. I'm not team all of the claims that sometimes come along with them, that they're this cure-all for gut health issues, because that's not at all the case, but it's good yeah, baseline. That's, well, that's why I rated them well-rated, is because I don't think they are stretched as far as a lot of other supplements are. The yeah. greens, powders, the BCA, they're, they're, I don't see a lot of people, the majority of people aren't claiming they fix everything and they're yeah. definitely not as good as the big rocks first, right? Your daily movement, your fiber, but they're an awesome, like actually designed product that if you mm-hmm. can take them would be a good place to take them. But I also don't think they're yeah. overhyped. So I think that's why I went with that answer, mm-hmm. which let's stick with the gut health trend. We got three more supplements. Yeah. Da, da, da. L- glutamine in three, two, one. Overrated. Oof. L-glutamine. I'm about Um, to start disagreeing with you just for the fact of disagreeing. I don't I just like. I know. (laughs) Both overrated. Okay. Why do you think? Because we've done this before in an episode too. Yeah. We've talked about L-glutamine. L-glutamine is, it's going to be really, really rare for anyone to be lacking in L-glutamine in your body unless if in times of need is under trauma, or if you're sick, you may have lower L- L-glutamine levels, and it can be necessary to supplement. Um, in ERs, they'll help 
they'll give it as a supplement for people going through trauma. That's where it's helpful. It does play a role in helping to um, strengthen, repair the intestinal lining. And that can be compromised during illness or um, times of trauma. So that's where it can be helpful. Other than that, you're not going to be lacking it from your diet. You also make it on your own. It's conditionally essential. The cl- there's very little research on its aiding in improving overall gut health in humans. Yeah, yet. and the hype maybe is, there will be in the future. Hype is through insane. the freaking roof. That's it why, is yeah. so insane. The main reason I went overrated because it is the most abundant amino acid found in the body. Yeah. And most people think like, oh, I, I bloat. Oh, I do this. I must need more of it. And it's like, no, you haven't. It's the whole bloating trend that's now that new, Yeah, I think, insecurity that the kind of, I mean, honestly, the industry almost created so they could pick on it and sell you a solution to it. Yeah, That's how I see it as because it's just, like you said, it might help less than 10% of people who maybe deal with like FODMAP issues, like IBS issues mm-hmm. or are coming back from like a really traumatic surgery or major illness. But if it's just you bloat because you eat a lot of food or something else, or maybe you don't move enough, it's not going to do anything to help. Yeah. Mm. Agreed. Sorry. Sorry about it. All right. I, second I, to I last on the supplement category, fish oil in three, two, one. Underrated. Oh, I thought, I, I don't know why I thought we were, I'm always thinking we're going to disagree. <laughs> I know, I some, which, okay, this actually, is this the only, I think this is only the second underrated in supplements I've given so far, right? Yeah, same here. Yeah. I think so. Whey protein shakes and now fish oil. Why do you think so? Yeah. Okay. So we have a whole episode on fish oil, which goes yeah. to show if we dedicate a whole episode to one single supplement, like there's something there. There's something there. So there is so much research showing that fish oil supplements can help reduce the risk for cardiovascular disease and improve lipid biomarkers, which are related to your overall cardiovascular health. Fish oil is incredibly, incredibly high in omega-3s, which a lot of Americans lack in the diet. And this is a great way to get in your omega-3 fatty acids, which can improve overall all heart health. Even in individuals with cardiovascular disease, oftentimes fish oil is recommended in conjunction with medication. And again, that's not me telling anyone to do that. If you have, mm-hmm. um, if you are taking heart meds, discuss that with your doctor. But this is an incredible source of omega-3s and a lot of Americans are not getting it in their diet. And this is an easy way to do so. Yeah. I mean, I, I pretty much the same reason it just fills a massive yeah. gap in people's diets with the nutrients epa and dha in the mm-hmm. omega-3 acids cardiovascular which is cool because it's i mean so many different parts of cardiovascular health a big one too i take it as a i mean one is a diabetic too because it also improves endothelial function right the cells that line mm-hmm. the interior surface of those blood vessels which damages with higher blood sugars and higher blood glucose over time mm-hmm. but outside of that i think the the benefits kind of stretch pretty far there's even promise showing it can improve symptoms of depression, anxiety, stress. It plays a massive role in muscle growth, fat loss. People forget these EPA, DHA, this is inside of your cell membrane. Every cell in your body is influenced by this. So I think it's massively underrated because it's like the whey protein subject. People don't really talk about it. That's also because the know claims what? aren't that it's going to give you a six pack or stop bloating. That was my theory because the, the, cl- the benefits are long term. The benefits aren't something you can see. And with anything yeah. that is effective and you can't actually see, the, it's not going to trend. It's not. It's like fish oil helped my dad lower his his cholesterol <laughs> by this, this much in one Which year. Which is weird because like, that's even a bigger – I mean, I think that's saying something better than anything else. It's like this is going to prevent someone from dying yeah. potentially. Mm-hmm. Boring. Okay. Mm-hmm. Last one on the supplement list. <sighs> Bet you $10 you can't guess what I'm going to say. Vitamin D in three, two, one. I said underrated too. Underrated. I think it's underrated. Matt, so underrated. This is my biggest underrated, I think, maybe of the day. Underrated. Yeah, which is why I'm surprised you didn't initially add this one to the list. I actually didn't get – I don't don't know if I got asked. I got to check again, but I don't know. Vitamin D, why do you say – so we have – this is another one we have an entire episode dedicated to. Yeah. One, it is one of the, it's considered vitamin D deficiency worldwide is considered a public, major public health concern. So in the world, there are, it's over 50% of the world either has insufficient or deficient 
in vitamin D. I say that it's very underrated because it is, I always say food first, but vitamin D is very difficult to get from diet and the other source, which is sunlight alone. Yeah. I don't care if you're living in a sunny state year round, absorption of vitamin D from the sun depends on multiple factors. And I am in support of using sunscreen too, which can block vitamin yeah. D absorption. So because it is so difficult to get in the diet, because so many people are insufficient in the US, vitamin D supplements are so, so, so helpful and important for most people. Yeah. I mean, people forget this is a hormone because it's called vitamin and vitamin D. It's a hormone produced in your body that is arguably one of the most insufficient in the entire world. Like you said, it's a public health crisis. And this is where even estimations when we go through the episode, I even think are undershot just because of how many people I personally know who when they finally get their blood work done, whether it's clients or people I just know, it's not just a little bit low. It is freaking through the floor. And yeah. I think I have a personal bias a little bit to this just because, I mean, my levels were in the 20s when ideally you want to be like in the 70 to 100 range. Mm -hmm. And I have never noticed a bigger difference in my daily energy, fatigue, my sleep, my mood in all these things more than increasing that number. I have not even close I'm to the same way. that number. So yeah, that's where it's just, I think it's so underrated because again, it's not an immediate fix. It doesn't have to do with your body or aesthetics. It, but it has so many functions in your body being a hormone and it's, it's where we leave it. All right. That wraps up the supplement category. I think that was one of the biggest ones. That was the biggest category outside of training. Yeah. That now was we're on to training or no, we're not. We're on to nutrition and diet, diet, diet and nutrition. So it's like diet trends. Yeah. Mainly diet, diet trends, food trends <sighs> that I think are, are pretty good us. ones. Give it to us. All right. We're going to – oh, now I have to do both at the same time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start with intermittent fasting for weight loss and just for general health. All right. Fine. No countdown? No three, two, one. Oh, I have to do a countdown too. Three, two, one. Overrated. Overrated? Overrated. F. We oh, my God. I can, Overrated. I can, why is it over? I mean, there's just no translational data in humans that shows – any physiological advantages over regular calorie restriction. So yes, there are yeah. health benefits that pop up, but not that outweigh just any other form of calorie restriction. And people make it fancy. They throw around words like autophagy. They try and sound smarter than it really is. The only physiological benefits are observed in like rat and mice studies. And it yeah. never plays out in humans that well. I still think it can be a great form of calorie restriction for a lot of people who struggle staying in a deficit. I've got several clients who use it, but just because it comes from that lifestyle perspective of it helps you stay in a calorie deficit, which yes. if you can't stay in a calorie deficit, it doesn't matter. So it's mm -hmm. just a useful tool, but it's not special. Yeah. Overrated. Yeah. If you're not hung, if you're a person that naturally is not hungry in the morning, okay, maybe capitalizing on that, extending when you start to eat food may be helpful for keeping you in a calorie deficit. For other people, that's not at all going to be helpful, but that's where it if it ever is helpful for weight loss, it helps people eat a little bit less. There you go. All right. Next one is clean eating. I'm surprised people are still wondering about that. But anyway, three, this two, a big one. one. Overrated. We also have a whole episode on this one too. Uh, I think we do. Either with that Zach. or it was in a, a – oh, it was with Zach. It was with Zach. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about Overrated. Things, I mean, but... we don't have to spend even a ton of time on this. And the only reason – this no. is not us saying don't eat nutrient-dense food the problem here and what i actually noticed with a lot of nutrition and diet questions is that there's just it's poor communication there's no definition of what clean means if you ask a vegan what clean is it means everything except for animal products if you ask someone who favors low carb it just means anything that's high in fat high in protein but anything with carbs are dirty like the bottom line is like if you just ate clean based on every person's definition of it you'd have an empty plate so it's a very yeah. lazy way of basing your diet, essentially. That's why yeah. it's over. A little side note, story time, example of this literally just happened to me this weekend. I was eating some skinny pop popcorn and someone came oh, up yeah. to me and was like, oh, that, that can't be good for you, can it? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, it can't be very like clean. I was like, I, I go, I'm like, I just reach inward. I'm like, I'm just going to ask it. What does that mean to you? What do you think that means? She's like, well, it can't be very good for you. I'm like, on what basis? She's like, well, it's in a package. I'm like, 
okay. So that's your basis for good or bad. And she was like, yeah. well, it's processed. I'm like, okay, well, I love it. And it's great. <laughs> and then the conversation was over. But it is like people don't really know how to answer the question. It's just based off of what you think is clean or not, what you think yeah. is good and bad, essentially. Yeah. Just like a lazy way of thinking. It's like, I don't want to explore what that actually means. So I'm just going to leave it here. It's like a nice cover yeah. up band aid. Right. Yeah. What we got next? All right. Next. Oh, God. Oh. Isn't this the same thing? I feel like this question is the same thing. More or less. Uh, I think it's different now today, I think. All right. Cutting out all processed food. Oh, I jumped the gun. Three, two, one. Over Overrated. Rated. It's just lazy again. It's, it can't be good or like there's good examples of process. Like we talked about in the milk and dairy episode where processing is a very good thing that adds to the nutrition. And there are some mm -hmm. where it makes things less nutritious for you. But again, you can't isolate one single food. It's a diet as a whole. That makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah. it's overrated. People that just, I like, think it's overrated thing. and it becomes really restrictive too of people thinking that this is realistic to never have a processed food. Like pro most processed foods are, well, everything has to get processed to a degree. There's so many different levels of processing, but if your food yeah. is safe to eat, it's going through some level of processing. Even if it's chicken, it has to get into that chicken form from the chicken that is processing. Yeah. How do you think um, that happened? Yeah. So it's, there's so many different levels. And yeah, if you're holding, eating some Pringles and Doritos, like no one's saying that that is good for you. No, that's not what this is. It's, it can be a part of your, a healthy diet though. It all depends oh, on yeah. how much, how often, exactly. what's best for you. Yeah. yeah. So overrated. next one. See who put this in here. This was requested a handful of times. This is not me. This is the people. You got to give the people what they want. I thought you just slipped this one in here. No, you got to give the people what they want. This, that's the, right. the epitome of this show. Got to give the people what they want. All right. Chipotle. <laughs> Overrated, underrated. I, I jumped again. Second biggest to vitamin D. Underrated. I said overrated. Are you serious right now? It's all personal preference. Is it not? To put like a food? One of the first national restaurant brands to commit to local oh, farming. Some of the highest animal welfare standards, <laughs> period. Fresh, delicious. Fits your macros if you're bulking, if you're cutting, if you're on the go. It's underrated. Oh, I think that's all true. I think it can be a great option. Like... Like a lot of places, like even you could go to Chick-fil-A and you could get things that could fit, like be tailored toward your, towards good. your goals. Good. I don't disagree with any of those statements. I just personally, and this is completely personal preference, I think it's just the taste of it, un, unamused by it. I, I don't, I'm not like. <laughs> Do y'all remember at the beginning of this episode how I said this could be just the end of this entire podcast? <laughs> I knew we were, if we were going to disagree on any, I knew it would be that one. This is but what so I, I think think it's just, I just don't think it's anything like as tasty as everyone thinks it is, no, but that's okay my personal that. preference. Yeah, you're entitled like, to your wrong opinion. Newest carbs, hack, like, newest Chipotle hack is you get catering for a party, but it's a party of one. It's yourself. And you just use that to meal prep for an entire week. You save a ton of money. That is hilarious. <sighs> it is. But yeah. Pretty good. All right. There's, what we got? Um, All right. What we got next? Oh, okay. Okay. This one. If it fits your macros, three, two, one. I I F Y M. What'd you put? It's a little blurry. I put overrated. Overrated. I put well rated. I'm excited to see yeah. what you think. I, I think it's also though, depending on like what it comes from, if mm -hmm. it's taken too far, like the old school bodybuilders, like just pop tarts and cereal and just protein shakes and no whole foods, then I think it's super overrated. I just think mm -hmm. it's a helpful tool for the, most of the population to I mean, honestly, just better their relationship with food, understanding flexibility in their diet. They don't have to cut out any one thing to make progress. So I think it's well rated in that sense that it can help people understand, oh, I don't need to cut out quote unquote processed foods or carbs or sugar or any of the, these things to make the progress I want to see. That's why I put it as well rated. But yeah, why, why do you say over? I put it as overrated just because I, in terms of carbs, fat, protein, People have different preference. Some people eat uh, more yeah. high fat. Some people eat more high carb. Protein is something that should be 
I think the guiding star there out of the macros, like really focus on your protein. Don't get too caught up in your fats and carbs, unless if you're competing, I can see it being really helpful. But yeah, that's why I say it's overrated because I'm going to, I'm going to say you swayed my decision based on that. Cause in my yeah. head, it's like for most of the clients I even work with, that's, we only pay attention to calories and protein. If you have a weight and body yeah. composition goal, cause unless you're competing, unless you're at that next level or mm. getting really, really lean fats and carbs, you're right. It just doesn't really matter as much. It's if important you take it, to like understand your, your macronutrients and it's important to see where they can fit in. Do fat, fats have more calories per gram? So maybe you do eat a really high fat diet. So maybe lowering that is going to be helpful so you can eat a bit more food. Yeah. Helps you learn but a lot about it. If it fits food. your macros, screw just, it. I'm, I'm going back not. to well. I'm going back to well. Screw it because of that. Yeah. I, to- it, does, it does. It helps. <laughs> even if you're not setting a specific fat or carb goal, I don't think there's another tool that can help you better understand food from like a re- like the big rock basis that get the principles down. I, I think well, that drives it you home. You could just I'm, learn about I think it's important to know about them, but I don't think you have to like track them. But I think that's the best way to understand something is to actually like go through it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I had learned about it before, but until I actually tracked it and used it is when I finally gained that like understanding piece. I'm yeah, but if you're still I'm... tracking your calories and protein, you can still see. Yeah. I think we're same thing. I, I, different. I, I, More I get honestly, it. I'm I get I'm sticking to this yeah. just to disagree with you too because we haven't had enough. Even though this <laughs> is the most, this is the category we're disagreeing the most. Yeah. All right. All right. What we got okay. next? Oh, shoot. Okay, so this one I still really I really don't know because I see it in so many different lights, and I can see it as well rated, overrated, and underrated. I can literally see it as all three depending on how you're oh, talking I about it and using it. Calorie counting. Three, two, one. I put well-rated just to be okay. kind of. I put over, but be, I, I really could. Like I also saying, think it's overrated. Depending on the light, I could see what it is. Uh, here's why I said overrated. Yeah, go Because first. I think it's I need help. overrated for the wrong reasons, underrated for the wrong reasons as well. I think it's overrated because a lot of people who promote it talk about it. I don't think they could tell you the definition of a calorie if you flat out ask them. I don't. So it's usually overhyped and I think misinformed. If that makes sense, it, a lot of people oh, don't really understand yeah. what exactly it means, what exactly it is, tracking for a calorie deficit. Mo- mo- they, I think it's just poor communication. That's it, why I think it's right? overrated. But mm-hmm. I do think it's underrated because if you can approach it as just data without any emotions attached to it, if you can get to a place where you can do that, it's probably the most important principle you can understand to managing your body composition and your weight through the course of your life. Yeah. I'm switching to overrated, actually. Okay. I'm going to say overrated. Copycat. But not even That's exactly good. for why you said it. I agree with all of that. But I I really see it in terms of if we're talking about something and me to say it's well-rated, I wouldn't want it to be – I would associate that with something sh- someone should always go back – like always mm. be thinking about like this is a good tool to always be using. Good point. Calorie counting should not be a part of your life. Being understanding of calories, it can be important. And depending on your goals, calorie counting may be a necessity temporarily. And I think way too many people do it incorrectly and are misinformed about it, like you were saying, that it leads down a really bad path of restricting control, not knowing Mm -hmm. how much you should actually be eating, only using calorie counters to tell you how much you should be eating way too little feeling so controlled by a stupid app and then one day stopping altogether because you're burned out and you either lose all your progress or you're afraid of food i think i just see because of how inappropriately people use it i think it's overrated and not like not enough people can talk about the the harms of that um yeah i agree I think we're on the same page with that. So it's a yeah. super helpful tool, just overrated. Mm-hmm. What do we got? Yeah. What do we got next? <sighs> Avoiding artificial sweeteners. Three, two, one. Overrated. Overrated. Yeah. I'm like, do we even have to Obviously. spend time? I mean, we've talked about this a lot and the premium on our regular show. It, once there's literally any human data showing it impacts anything, all the human data right now is positive in weight loss, in oh. blood markers for health in pretty much every other metric tract until there's any human data that's not super injecting mice with it, I'll be worried about it. 
Yeah, yeah, that's me. There's no human data showing the negative side effects of artificial sweeteners, only rodent studies. Artificial sweeteners, should you be having a ton every single day? No, you shouldn't be doing that with anything. But the amount that you would need to have in your diet in order for them to become a risk to your health in general is astronomical. I forget how many like Diet Cokes would you have to have a day in order to start to see it was up like 18 risk. to 36. I'm yeah. spacing the right number. We did it in, in one of those episodes, but it's 18 to 36 every single day. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. Not realistic. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We got two left. Right. What we got? On Avoiding nutrition. seed oils. Three, two, one. Overrated. Overrated. Again, it's just poor communication skills. Whenever you can lump dozens of things in one category and say they're all bad because they do this, it's just... If you want to go listen to the, the podcast we did with Alan Aragon, he does a great way of breaking it down, but you can't just lump all seed oils together and say they are bad. Look at canola mm -hmm. oil, look at sesame oil, look at any individual nut. 90 plus percent of human data is positive. And mm -hmm. these people are, they're, they're relying on rodent data at best. Again, rodent yeah, data that's... at best. The biggest issue here is that seed oils are found in ultra processed foods. Yeah. And that is what people will pull out in the grocery store and be like, this has seed oils in it. This is inflammatory. Seed oils are inflammatory. The inflammatory statement does come from that rodent data, but then they'll also extrapolate from diets that people are eating more ultra processed foods that contain seed oils versus people who eat a more whole foods based diet. Of course, eating less ultra processed foods is going to be good for your health. And yeah. the real issue is seed oils have omega sixes and it's not that they are pro inflammatory. They do play a role in the inflammatory pathway, but we need inflammation in our body to fight off disease, to keep ourselves healthy. There is an imbalance in these omega sixes to omega threes. The reason being people are not eating enough fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and too many ultra processed foods in general. It's not just the seed oils. They're also high in sugars. They're also high in trans fats. They're also calorie dense. So it's easy to overeat them. Mm -hmm. Not the seed oils. It's dietary patterns as a whole. That yeah. It's the same. It's the, in the what, 80s, 90s, how saturated fat's a bad thing. And then it's not. Mm -hmm. And then sugar and carbs are the bad thing. And now it's not. Now it's seed oils. Yeah. Look back in 10 years. I promise you no one's going to be worried about this. Yeah. It's just, yeah, that's where it is. All right. Wrap us All up. Right. What we got? Last one on nutrition. Okay. Oatmeal. <laughs> oatmeal. No, I was trying to remember my answer because I might change it. But okay. Mm. Oatmeal. Three, two, one. Ah. Underrated. Oh, I said well Did rated. We the yeah. only reason I'm saying underrated is it's getting a lot of hate. But like people got to remember rich in fiber, magnesium, phosphorus, copper, B vitamins, iron. So it's it, it, the closest thing you could say to a superfood, especially best way to start your day. I said mm -hmm. underrated just because of the fools, I'm trying to use a nice word, that are saying that it's the worst possible way to start your day for breakfast. It's just the most misguided click attention grabby crap I've ever seen. It's a phenomenal yeah. way to start your day for most That's people. why I was torn because looking at it from that perspective, the people who say oatmeal contains glyphosate, so it is going to give you cancer, that whole camp that we just talked about on an episode is, is nonsense. It's bullshit. You don't eat enough oatmeal in your day to have any glyphosate to cause any true issue. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's why it can be underrated because we should be giving it more attention in a positive light. Well rated Agreed. in terms of there are oatmeal recipes everywhere. Baked oats, overnight yeah. oats, like oatmeal paint everywhere. So that's where I could see some people saying, no, this is so overrated. It is not worth the hype. It doesn't taste that good. I personally think it's well rated in that sense of it. All the oatmeal recipes, the baked oats, keep them coming. I think that they're great. It's an easy way to get in more fiber. Like Tony just said, oatmeal is one of the most heart healthy foods. Also a great source of soluble fiber. Also, there's so much you can do with it. You can add in fruits. You can add in protein powders. You can add in chia seeds, have it for breakfast, have it for a snack, have it for a dessert, whatever you want. Team oatmeal. You could have it savory, sweet, convenient, cheap. Oatmeal, team oatmeal. <laughs> team oatmeal, team oatmeal. Team oatmeal. Right, that rounds out the nutrition, yeah. the diet and nutrition. Now we got two more categories left, training and miscellaneous lifestyle and trending versions. So we're going into training aspects. Let's get started off right here. Ooh, 
one of my favorite topics, full body training splits in three, two, one. Don't assume. Why would you assume my answer? It is underrated. Did you say well-rated? Tell me why you think mm-hmm. that. I said well-rated mainly because I don't think that I see – I think it's one of the few splits that I don't see this huge contra- like contrasting viewpoint of like this is the worst or this is the best training split to do. I just kind of see it. And that's me personally. Like mm-hmm. I think it's a very effective training split. I think that most people could really benefit from it. And I support it, but I think it's well-rated in the sense that I don't see it being very superior than yeah. uh, like others without giving away too much that we're going to be talking about. But yeah, I think it's well-rated. I don't I don't see much crazy controversy over it, but that's my own, like, yeah, that's just your, what I see. So I think I'm going to say, and this, I say underrated. I say it's honestly super underrated, like super mm-hmm. duper underrated and the only reason i think because the more and more i dive into it and go through it because this is the next full training split we're going to do a full podcast episode breakdown and full training program over on premium here in the next several weeks but it's underrated for a few reasons i think one i'm starting to see it how well it can be used as a different tool in different lights it can be a phenomenal way to break like plateaus as an intermediate or even advanced lifter because the further and longer you go with lifts, the easier it is to keep running into wall after wall with plateau Mm -hmm. and frequency as far as how often you're training throughout the week is rarely an explored path for progressive overload. We talked about it before. It's easier to get high volume in. It's usually resulting in higher quality sets. And honestly, it's like less wasted sets. The more I dive into the research on how many effective sets you can have per muscle group per day, not just mm-hmm. per week, it really taps out at like six to eight, maybe 10 to 12 at most. So if you're combining too much volume on one day, it's wasted. So I go major underrated. I can't wait till we do that episode mm-hmm. once yeah. we go in, which going on to the next training split, last training split, the body part split or the bro split as most people in three, two, one. Overrated. Overrated. Yeah. Yeah. Overrated. It has a potential to maybe be effective if you can go to the gym every single day and have – if you're prioritizing rest between sets, if you have a lot of time to spend there, maybe. Mm-hmm. But if you're only training one body part, it's not effective for strength or hypertrophy. And I, I can see where people will say it might be newbie gains, but over the long term, no. Yeah. Yeah, maybe good for beginners because you get plenty of rest if you really suffer from muscle soreness, maybe. But there's just too many wasted sets because if you're doing 20 sets on a muscle group in a day, half of those are ineffective and just Mm -hmm. too little frequency. Massively overrated. Next piece, I'm actually excited to see what you say on this one. Compound or strength movement, so like bench press, deadlifts, and squats for hypertrophy training in three, two, one. I said well-rated, but now I want to change my answer to underrated, but I'm going to keep it for well-rated. Okay. You start? <laughs> I want you to start. <laughs> yeah. All right. I said underrated for hypertrophy specifically because of mm-hmm. a few reasons. One, you can still build muscle at low reps. We realize that. Like the lower rep range is four to six is just as effective as eight to 12, as 15 to 20. Reps don't really matter. So you can still build muscle at low reps. And generally barbell movements are the easiest to increase your weight over time because you're able to use multiple muscle groups compared to dumbbell or machine work. And that just means easier progressive overload. And not only that, but it helps increase your strength, which is ideal because if you can be stronger and lift heavier weights at higher repetitions, more hypertrophy ranges, that's also easier and better for progressive overload. So I think it belongs honestly in almost every single training program with any goal. I can't imagine a good training program without some sort of at least regression of a compound movement or strength movement. Okay. So that I completely agree. And I think this is why I was confused because don't most people already know that? Like, isn't that? I mean, not really. Cause a lot of people like the optimal training group will never bench press will rarely squat because a leg press will target your quads even more. And a dumbbell at a 30 degree incline will activate more chest fiber than a barbell bench press. Yeah. There's a, for, if it's a purely hypertrophy camp, they rarely like to include that's why I think I was confused because I don't know that alternative. I don't see mm. that. That makes sense. All right. Staying with these. I like these a lot. Lifting straps okay. or lifting belts in three, okay. two, one. 
Oh, shoot. What'd you put? Over? <laughs> over? Overrated. All right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> okay, when it comes to like a lifting strap or a lifting belt, if you need that extra support, like they're super helpful. But I also see it as something that in the fitness gym bro, it's like almost deemed as this is just essential always. I don't think it's always Mm. essential. I think people also know that though. It's not one that I'm like, you have to have to wear this, but it it can be helpful. And that's why I feel like it's overrated because a lot of people are just live and die by their belts and straps, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because I also see on, at least maybe from my point of view, I see a lot of hate on them. As far as saying it's like if you can't do it, then you're just weakening your grip strength. You're only going to get that weaker and weaker. So I see a lot of hate on it. But I think a lot of people forget, and especially newer lifters, and honestly, not even just picking out people, but women in particular, all a strap or belt is doing is it's taking out the limiting factor in your lift. So like for an RDL, for example, like a Romanian deadlift, a lot of women have strong lower bodies, and those muscles can handle a lot of weight. But your grip strength, your forearms are just not very big. And that's for anybody. So Mm -hmm. especially when you're using a muscle group like your lower body, like your back that's massive, that can handle more weight, but you're choosing to go lighter because you don't want to use straps. You're just making it an inefficient movement for your grip strength. And you're also making an inefficient movement for whatever muscle group you're targeting. So you're just wasting your time essentially. So I said underrated more because I think I wish more people use them as a tool. I don't think you use them for everything, but it's just taking out that limiting factor. All right. Next training aspect, fasted cardio in three, two, one. Overrated. Overrated. Big one. Overrated. If you are working out super early in the morning and you don't do well, you don't do cardio well with food in your stomach, it makes you feel, get crampy, nauseous, what have you. All right, do some fasted cardio. If you're not hungry in the morning yet, do some fasted cardio. If you're having a little bit of something for some extra energy before your workout, before you're doing cardio, is that going to have any impact on the cardio you're doing other than you feeling better doing it? No, it's not that fasted cardio or unfasted is better than the other. It's all about what you thrive best on. Thought process is that it increases fat oxidation, which fat oxidation means burning fat, the burning of fat in the moment, but that's not the same thing as fat loss. And there's been several RCTs showing when you match calories, it does not matter if you are fasted or unfasted. If you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose the same amount of body fat, the same amount Mm -hmm. of weight when you're matching those. So it's that mechanism versus action and outcome kind of thing. So overrated. This one, ooh, I'm curious to see what you say about this. Hip thrusts for glute growth. This was, I think, the most asked and most requested one hip thrusts for glute growth in three, two. Why are these one. so hard for me? This was I a tricky well one. Rated. Yeah, I put well rated. Well rated. I think very well rated. Hip thrusts are very saturated in terms of that exercise being talked about so much. For It's everywhere. People are always talking about them, always recording themselves doing them, like lots of hype around them. And I think that they deserve that hype because they are effective for glute growth. If you are doing a glute day, I'm going to put hip thrusts in there. It's really important that you understand how to engage your glutes, have proper form, big, big team hip thrusts for glute. Good way to grow your glutes. Yeah. <laughs> Not much yeah. more than that for me. There's a lot of hype around this movement. I'm kind of shocked. I didn't say overrated just because of how much hype, mm-hmm. but it deserves it yeah. as a horizontal pressing movement. It, it both targets the lower and upper parts of your glute, which like squatting, for example, is great for the lower part. Adduction is great for the upper outer part and good glute training. If you really want to build good glutes, you should have a combination of both lateral, horizontal and abduction movements. But if you could only choose like one glute exercise forever, you're not going to find a better one than a hip thrust that you can progressively Mm -hmm. overload, that you can add weight to that targets the glute as a whole the most. And it's generally pretty risk-free for injury when in comparison to squats, to deadlifts, I think very properly rated. Yeah. This one, stretching, mobility, and warm-ups in three, two, one. Underrated. Underrated. by my card. Big, big underrated. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Most people skip it. 
from a time standpoint. It's very easy to ignore because you want to get people like, yes, a chunk of it comes from, I just want to make sure I get in my workout in general. I don't have time for this. I'm just going to skip it. What matters is how much weight I'm pushing on the bench or how I'm doing on my hip thrusts. And I feel like it's very easy to overlook just from a almost how I look at abs at the end of my workout timing piece and yep. not wanting to do it because it can be boring. And there are so many benefits to having a good mobility warm up routine, especially from an injury prevention standpoint, giving you more depth in a squat, helping prevent injuries, looking at the long game and that most people who have been weightlifting for a bit run into, why are my knees starting to hurt? Having good mobility routine at the beginning is going to be really helpful for that long game. Huge. 100%. I, I, same thing. I said underrated just because so many people either skip out on it or just go real lazy about it. Yeah. Maybe walk on the treadmill for a few minutes. I, I don't think anything else is going to improve your performance in the gym more than pre-workout other than a proper warm up routine. And I honestly, if you're a little, you're calling me out real quick. I'm being lazy on mine. We had a, it was like the round robin episodes where we had multiple categories. We did one on warm ups where we went through the perfect three step and three phase warm up. If you can actually do that, wake up your CNS, your central nervous system, get your blood pumping and get your mobility working. Your strength's going to improve. Your endurance is going to improve. Your effort and intensity is going to improve. Nothing. I, I really think this even goes ahead of pre workout for something that can increase your performance in the gym. Which is a big one. Yeah. On to the next. Oh, very controversial topic nowadays. And we only got mm -hmm. what three three of these left in training. Mm -hmm. Training to failure in three, two, one. Overrated. Overrated. We match again. Okay. We match. You don't need to train. To, it's crazy because you don't need at all to train to failure to see progress. Go hard, lift as much as possible, absolutely kill yourself, and then don't even talk about progressive overload. If you want to progress and you're not mm -hmm. focusing on progressive overload and you're only focusing on going to failure, how consistent are you at going to failure? How, how often are you able to actually go to failure? It's not necessary yeah. at all. You see it a lot in like very rookie level training if you're brand new to the gym, especially guys jacked full of testosterone. It feels good to go to failure. It hurts. It feels good. And I think it's also common for the people who like live, eat, breathe, sleep the gym. It is your yeah. life. And that's just what you're head down in a lot of the bodybuilding world. But it's so zoomed in on the single one day where I think it could be helpful at times to assess where you need to be training. If you never train to failure, I oftentimes see a lot of people stopping way short from failure than they think, right? Because optimally, you're stopping about one to three reps short of failure for a really effective set for hypertrophy. But I think a lot of people underestimate where that number actually is. And sometimes training to failure on safer exercises to fail on bicep curls, overhead presses, things that aren't going to crush you can be super helpful to go to absolute failure because you really see how far you can push yourself and you see what weights you should be training at. But so overhyped because you can make the same exact progress stopping just short of failure and usually better progress over time because you can lift more on the next exercise and throughout the mm -hmm. entire week, which is going to lead to more progress than if you're just fatigued, fatigued, fatigued. So overrated. Yep. All right, two more. <gasps> Pilates in three, two, one. I changed my answer like literally just two, three minutes ago. I put overrated. You put? you put overrated. 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 What yeah. was it before? Well-rated? Yeah. Well-rated. But then okay. I realized that how much attention it gets for toning and yes. completely transforming your body. It's just such bullshit in terms of how it's marketed. And it is so, so overrated from that standpoint. This Pilates transformed my body is mm -hmm. absolute bullshit. What's going to lean you out is having less body fat. However you do that, typically that's from eating less. And you need to have the muscles to show it. If you're not doing any strength training to help increase your muscle mass, you're not going to have this to show. You're not going to have definition to show. But I love Pilates. It is such a great mobility workout. If you're talking about increasing your overall mobility, your range of motion, working the smaller muscles that you maybe have never worked before, helping with injury prevention, and especially as you get older in terms of 
your joint health. It's not how it is because it's great for mobility, great for flexibility, great for understanding Mm -hmm. how you connect to each movement. It's just marketed so, so terribly wrong. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything special. So overrated. And that rounds out our training section down to one more, down to one more, which I'm pumped for this one. We got lifestyle and trending. So the hottest ones today, we only got a few left. I think it's like six. We got five, six left. Mm -hmm. These are probably tied for the most asked for in the, in the Instagram questions. Mostly I think because they are the hottest ones they're trending right now. Yeah, they are. Which I'm not shocked about this first one. So here's we here we go. We got lifestyle and training to finish off the day. I'm curious because we might have some mismatch on these, but let's hear it. All right, liver and organ meat. Okay, three, two, one. Overrated. Okay, overrated. (laughs) I'm shocked. This is an argument that people will give benefits to carnivore MD to liver king and be like, well, not everything they say is BS liver and organ meat, super nutritious. Yes, it's nutritious and it carries a good amount of different vitamins and minerals, Mm -hmm. but so do fruits and vegetables and nuts and regular beef. They're not that special. Like beef liver, for example, it's decently high in vitamins A, B6, B12, and D and copper, a trace mineral, but so is regular beef and a handful of nuts. You'll get the same exact amount in that, except it's going to taste disgusting if you do that. And the supplements which are where these people build their businesses from. I mean, at that point, they're just selling you the vitamins and minerals that you could just get in a much less expensive multivitamin, if that was your worry at all too. So extremely Mm -hmm. overrated. We're not saying they're unhealthy. It's just a very silly way of trying to get these nutrients in your body. Like it's just ridiculous. I agree. If you like it, I mean, go, go have at it, but it's... Those bull testicles. Nothing superior. And the reason why they are preaching having this organ meat and all the micronutrients is because they also recommend to not eat vegetables because they're so they're not getting micronutrients in their diet I don't, I'm also very, a very valid point that is a staple of both of those business plans yeah yeah so yeah that's it next 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 what do we got I would sleep three two one underrated okay under yeah. i feel like i haven't given underrated. an underrated in a minute underrated matt mm-hmm. so underrated up mm-hmm. there with vitamin d and chipotle is the most underrated things yeah today slight joke on the chipotle and we've talked about this before i cannot wait to do the entire episode on it proper sleep and great sleep would be a performance enhancing drug if you could sell it yeah. in a pill or an injection like nothing's going to improve your lifespan your health span nearly every metric of health your testosterone, your growth hormone, countless hormones, cognition, every single thing, your physique, your cognition, your mood, every aspect of health. And I just don't think people take it seriously enough. People know it's important. Kind of like when you look at someone's values, they might say something that is their value, but how do they act, right? How much time do people spend at improving their sleep through the week compared to the gym, compared to their diet, compared to these? Maybe five minutes if they're lucky, no one spends time on this. And that's why I cannot wait to do this episode to show people where. Because I think it's also just not talked about how to that much. Yeah. And it's also though, our society, at least in the US, does not put sleep on a pedestal where, you know, climb to climb the corporate ladder, work until you drop dead. Like I'll sleep when I'm dead, yeah. be successful, sleep is for the week. I think we are definitely gearing away from that a little bit more since we have mm-hmm. a lot more intelligent, influential people talking about how important sleep is who are also very successful, like Andrew Hermosi, Alex Hermosi, Andrew Huberman, sorry, Andrew Huberman, Alex Hermosi, I combined them. All, all these really successful people, also successful business owners, entrepreneurs who thrive on their sleep health and hopefully they'll get talked about more. All right. I think the next one, ice baths, we talked about it before. Three, two, one. Overrated. Yeah, we have a we have an episode on ice baths and saunas. Take it away. I I, re- it, I think this is turned into something just to make you look cool. It's worse, not better, for building muscle. Has no impact on physique or fat loss at all. I love them, and I would use it daily for the cognition, for the mental toughness aspect. If I had access to it, I would use it every single day. But the benefits are stupidly overblown. So uh, mm-hmm. insanely overblown more than almost anything else. Same thing of 
almost why I rated the creatine thing overrated. People are just claiming it fixes every problem every. known to man. And it, it's yeah. good at a couple things. It is not good for a lot of other things. Overrated. I completely agree. I agree. I don't have anything to add to that. Let's go contrast yeah. that one then. All right. Saunas. Ah, three, two, one. Overrated. I knew you were going to put underrated. I put under. I, but I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is another one where I could have seen myself answering both either through ways. Basically. I said underrated for sauna just because I'm changing it. I'm going well. I'm yeah. going well. Uh, okay. Because there's yeah. camps that I think overblow it, to not to the degree that ice baths do, but there are camps that will say that it improves pretty much everything. There is solid evidence that it improves your risk for cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer in the world. And it just gives you an extra benefit to regular cardio workouts if you stack it on top of and at the end at. It's not going to do much to your physique. It's overblown for those aspects of it, but there's not that many things that have such a direct impact on your cardiovascular health. And it's so easy. Like you just, you just go sit there. Like, you know, you don't have to go do anything crazy. You don't have to go run up a mountain. You just sit there. You sit there, listen to a Mm -hmm. cool podcast like this one. So I'll change my mind instead of over. I'm going to go well-rated. I, I said overrated mainly because it's so not a necessity like at all. And if you have the extra time, like Mm -hmm. I personally would recommend if you have the extra, I'd recommend go walk for 20 minutes, especially if you're sitting at a desk job, like all day walking over the sauna. Like it's, it's not a necessity, but I, the research is, is really cool in terms of how it can help with cardiovascular health, but it's so not something anyone has to have in their routine. I'm going to change it again. I'm an indecisive little baby. I'm going over, I'm going overrated (laughs) just because the point you said from the time aspect for so many people, if you're not nailing your diet, if you're not getting seven, eight, nine, 10,000 steps a day, it would make more sense to spend that time elsewhere. Yeah. I'm a, I just fold it. I fold it hard. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> you got me. We got two left. What are they? Okay. This one. Ooh, three, three okay. left, three left, three left. What are they? Okay. Emphasis on hormone health for weight loss. You put overrated and underrated. Oh no. I was going to put it down when you counted down to three, two, one. Oh, three, two, one. Like that. That's what I was going to do. I put Over- well I'm- rated. But I was really, really le- leaning towards I, overrated. So I'm going to let you go first. See. over because of the claims and how many supplements are there. I think how people yeah. use it. I think that's what it is. How people use it and talk about it is what makes it overrated. It's oversimplifying such a complex problem. Yeah. Your endocrine system, your hormone health, it's so interdependent. And we've talked about that. It's not complicated. It is complex. And yeah. not any one thing is going to help for every single person. I think it's the same thing as we talked about earlier. It's a scapegoat for a lot of people because it's not easy to look at as far as like when it comes to weight loss, it's easy to say, it's easy to blame your diet. It's easy to blame the, blame the things that are in your control because you see them. It's, or sorry, it's hard to blame those things. It's easy yeah. to blame your hormones because unless you have a full blood test done, you don't know. And you could just say, that's the reason I'm not losing weight. Oh, do you have proof? No, not at all. I think it's it's used as a scapegoat. I think it's if you mm-hmm. want to use it because proper endocrine health is really important, get a blood test done, work with a professional, and focus on which specific hormones you specifically need to improve. You mm-hmm. can't just do any one thing that's going to just improve all hormones outside of, I mean, essentially sleep and a proper diet. Like those are the yeah. two things that really help everything. But that's where I say, I think it's just a lazy scapegoat you, for, for a lot of people. Yeah, you're right. I have to say overrated because it is so true. There is – hormones are so important. And I do like that there has been this rise in conversation about hormone yeah. health, especially with women. I feel like it's kind of been ignored for so long and how much that can impact so many aspects of your life in terms of your cycle especially. It's so important to consider, but it is so individualized. You cannot even say that you – know what you're talking about for someone else's hormones. You can't say that a trend like eating a raw carrot salad is going to improve your hormones. What does that even mean? Like, how do you need to improve your hormones versus how I need to? That's, yeah, that's where it's overrated. Overrated. We got two left. This is the one that actually came up a few times that I'm excited about. Um, I guarantee we're going to disagree with this. You got to say it first. (laughs) Okay. Overrated or underrated? The Huberman morning routine. So that's light, meditate, movement, cult. Three, two, one. I put well-rated. 
I went under, but I, I think honestly it probably should be well. It's yeah. got a lot of hype and turned into a meme, which makes mm-hmm. me love it. But it's something I do every single morning. And it's I, I can't think of anything that's better impacted my sleep outside of timing my stimulant use throughout the day, like caffeine use throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Other than this, like starting your day, because everyone looks at improving your sleep. What can I do right before bed? What supplements can I take? People rarely say, okay, how am I starting my day? And if I don't get movement light and cold, I, I just, I have a notable decrease in how well I can perform from like a cognitive standpoint that day. If I don't get all three of these, a cold little shower, rinse off, not nothing special, a workout and just some sort of light, I'm groggy until noon. That's just, so I think it's, I'll say well rated because it's turned into a meme at this point. Yeah. I say well rated. I almost lean towards, towards overrated more than well rated because having a solid morning routine is just helpful. And if you stray away from your morning routine, you're going to feel Mm. off just in general. All right. right. Last one. All the way down the list. Number 42, 43, who freaking knows? What do we got? What are we rounding off This is 10,000 steps a day. Three, two, one. You never go in with me. I put well rated. Under. I went under. You think it's underrated? I went underrated. People well, are uh, always here, talking. It. Sorry, you go first. People talk <laughs> about it. That was one of the early on episodes. I think the idea of 10,000 being magical is overrated, no. but yeah. I think the premise of it is underrated because I really don't think, and by don't think, I mean there is proof and evidence that people don't move enough, people don't walk enough. Oh, yeah. And it is one of the closest metrics that's correlated with all-cause mortality or death from all causes as you age. Like by far one of the closest correlated metrics you could track. That mid-analysis a few years ago that was really showing for every thousand extra steps you take a day, your risk of all-cause mortality decreased by 12% from the bottom to the top group. And the stats that blew my mind from that study is because they observed them from anywhere from, I think, 3,500 steps at the bottom group to... 16,000 steps at the top group Mm -hmm. and you saw a threefold or 200% increase in all cause mortality in the bottom group from the top group, a threefold 200% where the difference in non-smokers to smokers, you only see a 70 to 80% increase. Mm -hmm. So the, the premise of 10,000 overrated, but the premise of who gives a crap, just go walk and move Mm -hmm. underrated. Okay. I total I see I completely agree with you. I still say it's well rated though because mm-hmm. movement is not a priority. So how our infrastructure yeah. and our towns, our communities, we everything is built to move less, promoting a sedentary lifestyle regardless of all the benefits. Like those benefits are very clear. Public health officials understand the benefits of moving more. I still think a lot of people do a good job of just when it's discussed how important it is. And it has been super trendy of getting your steps in. Oh, got to get my steps in, going for my hot girl walk. And I think that that has become really hyped. And I Mm -hmm. love that. I think that that deserves the hype. Where I still say it's well rated though, is realistically, even though people may know that this is something they should do, a lot of people sit at a desk job all day and are, are not fed with enough information to know that this is something that they have to really make an adjustment for and work towards. Like, I think that there are a lot of people it's that getting point. those 10,000 steps is too, like, too steep. very unrealistic. So I think that's where I say it's well rated sometimes. But okay, I, I feel that it's, I get it. Yeah. It's like people know it's important, but the, their actions don't align with them knowing it's important. They yeah. might say it's important. They know it's important, but it's like, okay, then why aren't you doing anything about it? That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Freak. Yeah. We just made it. That That's was it. Marathon. That was fun. My goodness. That was fun. I'm like sweating right now. I like that. <laughs> that was a good one. Let us know. Let us know if you like that one. If you like more stuff like that, not in games, whatever it is, overrated, underrated, those massive mm-hmm. quick boom, boom, boom. I had a blast. Anything that gets me doing arts and crafts, I'm having a good time. I'll do it again. Give us your thoughts, your feedback. We'd love to hear it. We'd love interacting with you. But that's all we got for today's episode. We'll see everyone on premium in just a few days on Friday for this week's Q&A AMA as we go in as always. But have a productive week. Let us know if you disagree with us on 80s too. Yeah. I mean, people will for sure. Yeah. Let (laughs) us know. Hit us up in the DMs. We'll talk about soon.